April. Are we in April? April third. Yep. April third, twenty thirteen. And I am Beatrice Kessel, Special Magistrate for the City of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of this city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss the case and you may leave. These proceedings are being recorded, therefore all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have a translator who will assist you during this proceedings. When your case is called, the property owner agent for the property owner or any witnesses that may have that you may that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room when asked please directly speak into the microphone and say aloud your name your business or mailing address and your relationship to the property if you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney affidavit in order for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation. Please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first and then the property owner will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of fact on the case. If I find that a violation of, of the city codes exist or existed at your property, then depending on the, tape, the case type, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement action at this time, I will table this case proceeding to another hearing date in the future. If you do not agree with my finding of fact and or ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of the administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost of obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant. And it is recommended that persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at this proceeding. Pursuant to city codes and the city of North Miami, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. 
Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. Now I will we'll ask if everyone please stand um, so we can um, say the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country if you're able to. And then remain standing to take the oath for forgiving testimony. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you're giving testimony today, please raise your right hand and take the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And say, I do. Thank you. you. Thank you. May be seated. <clears throat> Mr. Graham, please announce if we have any additions, corrections, or deletions, <laughs> deletions to the um, hearing agenda. Uh, good evening, and yes, we do. We have uh, uh, started with an agenda of 62 cases. We've uh, whittled it down to 27 cases. So uh, we want to thank the community for, for um, being responsible and complying their cases. We do have some that we will move to another hearing calendar. Beginning with agenda item number three and four, Afzal and Sabia Khan, CEBNP 2012-00011, and item four, CELDR 2012-00004, have both complied. Item five, uh, Ahmed Mukhtar, CEODS 2012-00132 is complied. Item six, Ada Bauer, CEMHO 2012-00014 is complied. Item eight, Alfonso Pacheco, uh, CEBRD 2013-00001 is complied. Item 11, Anna Lopez, CEPFY 2013-00006 is complied. Turning to the next page, item 18. David Blum, CEFAW 2013-00007 is complied. Item 19, Dorothy Martin, CEBNP 2013-00008 is complied. Item 20, Erlene and Roberta Lightborn. CEXP 2012-00247 has complied. Item 21, Eg Egbert and Prudence Hewitt, CEBRD 2013-00004 is complied. Item 24, uh, Faustin Alm Almanor, uh, CEODS 2013-00013 is complied. Turning to the next page. Item 25, Fernando and Yvonne uh, Gazmuri, CLDR 2012-00023, postponed in May. Item 27, Freddie uh, Boza and Lydia Martinez, CEJNK 2012-00147 is complied. Item 29, Henry S. Bonas, CEJNK 2013-00023 is complied. Item 30. Herman and Eunice uh, Zasso, CEODS 2013-00017 is complied. Item 34, Irene Jerome, CEFAW 2013-00003 has complied. Item 35, Jamie and Adoria Collins, CEXP 2013-00009 is complied. Item 37 and item 38. C, uh, uh, Jazadel Magarin and Deborah Contreras, CEBRD 2013-00002 and CEMHO 2013-00007 are both postponed to May. Item 41, Jose uh, Cardona and uh, Yesia Mar uh, Marti, uh, CE ZPU 2013-00002 has complied. Item 42, Lefe Dumay, CEJNK 2013-00024 has complied. 
Item 43, Lucy Nid Rodriguez, CEFAW 2013-00001 is complied. Item 44, McCary Jacques, CEMHO 2013-00006 is complied. Item 45, uh, Mamie James, CEIVY 2013-00018 is complied. Item 46, Marie St. Fleur, CEIVY 2013-00041 has complied. Item 48, McInord uh, Medo, CEMHO 2013-00003 uh, postponed to May. Item 49, Miguel A. Jimenez, CEIVY 2013-00048 has complied. Turning to the, to the last page. Item 52, Neil Wallet, CEBLR 2012-00089 has complied. Item 53, Paul A. Joseph, CEMHO 2013-00009 has complied. Item 55, Sammy and Daisy Thomas, CEJNK 2013-00020 has complied. Item 56, Scott Barnett, CEBNP 2013-00006 has complied. Item 58, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, CEFAW 2012-00113 has complied. Item 60, Tom Eastwood, CELDR 2012-00022 has complied. Item 61, Wells Fargo Bank. CEMHO 2013-00008 has complied. And, f and finally, item 62, CEIVY 2013-00005, Yolanda Concepcion has complied. Those are the amendments to this evening's agenda. If you are ready to proceed, we'll call the first case. Ready. Okay. We'll begin with the agenda item number seven, Elaine Ducasse and Elnor uh, Ducasse. Okay, for the property, uh, homesteaded property at 13420 Northwest 11th Avenue, CEIVY 2012 00252, Code Officer Sanders case, which was open on December 21st, 2012. The case was heard on March 6th and tabled to this evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, good evening. Would you please state your name for the record and your relationship to the property? Uh, Eleanor Duke. <laughs> Sorry. And you are the owner of the property? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Sanders, if you would uh, bring us up to date with a report on this case. If you can, I wasn't sworn in um, okay. when you all um, did the swearing in. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this pro these proceedings will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. I'm Shannon Sanders, City of North Miami Code Enforcement Officer. As of today, the vehicle still remains um, on the property, and the tag remains um, not valid. Do you have any photographs that you can show? Um, yes, they look the same as um, it looked um, at the last board meeting, but I do have pictures. Can you show? This was, uh, the case was tabled the last hearing, and this was for a, um, a white four-door Cadillac DeVille with an expired tag. Okay. Ma'am, how are you? I'm fine, thank okay. you. Okay, you had an opportunity to review the photographs that yes, the city yes. code officer has shown you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is this your vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you understand what the violation is? Yes, and I'm... I can barely yes, hear you. Yes, ma'am. Are you okay today? Yes, I just have a little sore throat in my throat. But you're little, fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. you're not under any... No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just fine. All right, so do you understand what the issue is yes ma'am okay um the last time this matter was heard we tabled it um 
going to assume that we wanted to give you an opportunity to remove the vehicle or um, do something. Right. Okay. Why are we back here? I'm still asking for an extension because I'm trying to sell the car because due, due to the alternator, it takes fixing the alternator is not that expensive but because of the type of car it is i have to pay for the transmission also to be removed to fix that so i'm trying to sell the car it's costing me too much i'm having buyers call me and hopefully i should get rid of it this week because i have someone that even called me today it's just screening because when most people find out that you have to move the transmission so I'm really trying to find a mechanic to sell it to, and I really came across one I'm waiting because he's from Port St. Lucie. So it's going to take him time to come down here. I spoke with him today. He told me he was coming to pick it up because he collects those cars. So I'm just asking for a few more, at least two more weeks or so, and it should be from there. If not, I just, I guess I'll give it away. Okay, is your testimony that you don't have the fun? Do you work? No, right now I'm unemployed. Okay. And that's my major problem. So I'm sorry? That's the main problem that I'm Try having. Try speaking into that the is microphone. The main problem that I'm having with that. Okay, so mm. you're you're so unemployed. I'm going to sell the car, yes. Okay. And January just expired in January. And it just so happens that the decal is looking so late because someone came and pulled a decal off all the cars there. And I have the police report for that. I did all of that already. But I'm gonna sell the Cadillac because I'm not gonna fix it. city uh, through your honor uh, have you considered uh, giving it to a junkyard maybe they'll be able to pick it up um, well, if, if I don't get rid of it I will have to do that but I'm hoping to sell it so at least I can get some money for my car it, like I said it just expired January the, the detail on it the car was running until the alternator gone and like I said, the alternator is not really a big problem. Okay. It's that you have to move a transmission for that type of car to get to the alternator, which is costing me like fixing two things. So I'm willing to sell it that I found that out. Okay, but if you're not willing to sell it, you are willing to yes, get I'll rid of it. Through yes. So by the next yeah. meeting, yes, one or the other would have happened? I will. I have no objection to allow, tabling this one more month for, to allow her to either sell it or, yeah. or junk it. Yeah. And she Thank will not be here again because she is just. <laughs> that was a little difficult because I could not spend anything on the car to fix it. So okay. Um, all right. Do you understand what the city attorney has said? Yes, I do. Okay. So basically, we're giving you a, a second opportunity to um, fix the violation because if you come back here the next time and I have to issue a daily fine mm -hmm. against you. Imagine how much more yeah. that's going to cost. Okay. So we're going to give you until, um, what's the next, here, the abatement date. Uh, the next okay. hearing will be May 1st. May 1st. Okay. So Fine. get it done. And so that when Ms. Sanders drive past your, your property, she won't see the, the car. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Your Honor, in the next case will be agenda item number one, Abdul and uh, ta uh, Takdir Hassan. Okay. At uh, 12045 Northwest Miami Court. This is an unhomesteaded property, KCEBNP 2012-0090. This case was opened by Code Officer Wilcox on September 24th, 2012. It is a new case. For, uh, Remind me of the page, I'm sorry. Uh, item okay. one. Okay. Uh, to obtain an after the fact permit for electrical plumbing and renovation of two bathrooms and exterior door. Okay. Good evening, sir. Please state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is Sean Hassan. I have a power of attorney for my mom who's okay. stuck okay. there. Uh, Do you want me would, to give that to you? Yes. Uh, please present that for
city finds it legally sufficient. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Hassan, this is a new case. Uh, have you had an opportunity to discuss the case with your with your parents? I uh, my father's passed. Oh, so he has. So okay. he's passed, and uh, I have discussed it with, with my mom. Okay, very good. We're going to let out Code Officer Wilcox explain how he came to cite the, sure. cite the property. And then if you have any questions of him, you can ask him, and then you can make any statements you want. Sure. Um, Officer Wilcox. Yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, property address is 12045 Northwest Miami Court. Uh, the property is vacant. Uh, the property was initially inspected on September 24, 2012. Um, the property owner did came by the office. I found the property owner that permanent is needed for the work being done inside the property. I also showed pictures of the violation to, to his brother. Um, he did say that he was going to go through the process of getting the permits. Um, they've been communicating with me back and forth. Um, him and his brother live in California, so they travel here and to make the effort to get these permits done. Um, he did go by there today and did a process number for the work uh, for a demo of that room, and also he's going to try to get that room um, approved through the city through permits. I'm going to show the photos to you guys here. Thank you. Flips. Thank you. Mr. Hassan, do these photos accurately represent the property? That, as yeah, the that, yeah that, that definitely that top one, and I trust that the packet does okay. as well. Thank you. These photographs were taken back in September. Um, no additional work has been done since these photographs were taken. Is that correct? Well, not to my knowledge because I haven't gained access again to the property. That's the only time I can take photos at that time. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Hassan, you have had the opportunity to talk to the code enforcement officer and how far along are you in the process of trying to obtain a permit so fortunately we now have architect engineering designs we've had a survey done of the property all of that's been submitted to the city with payments for uh right now four permits and we expect that we need a fifth permit so uh I guess it's building and structural because there's uh, an addition in the back that <coughs> needs to be torn down, actually two additions that need to be torn down, and one that if it's feasible to legalize it, it will be legalized and turned into the laundry room, and if not, that will be demolished as well, and a new laundry room will be built. And, uh, and then there's electrical and plumbing as you can see from the pictures the electrical and plumbing and we need a, a permit for uh, two of the windows okay so all of that so we've 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 submitted for the permits and so we'll just have to wait for that oh they've been submitted to the city yeah we submitted yeah we submitted yes okay. yes yeah okay. well i have no objection to giving them more time. okay uh, how long do you think um you would need so the, we have just been able to start the process, and as Officer Wilcox said, we don't live here, so we're doing, and we're moving as quickly as we can, I promise you. We're not, we're not delaying things. We're on top of it from there between my brother and I. Um, the contractor said that uh, he expects it to be um, at a minimum 60 days, possibly 90 days, because he said that the city would give feedback on the engineer's designs in the first place, and if they, you know, there's always some things that need to be changed, and then 
that needs to be finalized before the work can even begin. And like I said, you can see that the work is pretty extensive. Okay. It's beyond even what the pictures have. I mean, there's, there's, you know. So he said that, you know, every time if they do electrical, then the inspector has to come out, approve that, and then. And so he's saying that the windows like between 60 and 90 days. Okay. Um, do we have any objection to tabling this for 90 days, or do you want them to I come back within I 60 would days 60 for a report? Days, Your Honor. Okay. For report, yes. So we'll table it for 60 days. Okay. Um, so that we can have a report back as to progress. Okay. And now, is there any way for us besides? I mean, I'm communicating. I've been communicating with Officer Wilcox, and he's been he's been great. W we I flew in from California for this, and I understand that's not your guy's problem. Um, but is there some way to communicate uh, short of having to fly fly back here? We've come in every single month since the citation to try to get this work done. I'm hoping the yeah, 60 days I gets done, but I is there? I mean, if you if you send perhaps a detailed email, okay, um, I think we can probably read that into the record. Unless your honor has any issues with that, I, I would be I would have no problems, okay. uh, providing of course that it's backed up by by well, documentation. Sure, sure, we'll we'll do that. Uh, and who I have no objection sorry. if the city has no objection, um, so that you know you don't have to keep flying back and forth here and stay in contact, Mo Im most importantly, is to stay in contact with the code enforcement officer because okay. he's the one who has to report back to the, okay. s to the city and, okay. and me. And, 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 and Officer Wilcox will tell you that we've stayed in touch with him. We've been in touch with Inspector Jackson. And we've tried to do our best to move things along. As It's empty. There's no benefit to us to have the place empty. We're paying more expensive insurance, and uh, we pay someone to go visit there multiple times a week. I mean... And the, just the cost of flying back here has just been astronomical. So we have every interest to move it Great. along as quickly as possible. So do I just send that detailed letter to Officer Wilcox? That's correct. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank All you. Right. He'll provide you with the e his card with the email. Okay. And okay. okay. Thanks, thanks, Officer Wilcox. Uh, been, no problem. You've been very patient. Thank you. Okay. If you're ready to proceed, the next uh, case will be <coughs> agenda item number 4747, Martin Wilson Renard, for the Homestead of Property at 1525 Northeast 138th Street, case CEOSV 2013-00005. This is a new case regarding an oversized commercial flatbed truck on the property. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Would you state your name? For the My name is Martin Wilson Renard. And you are the property owner? Property owner. Thank you. Mr. Um, Clark, if you would please tell us about this case. Wayne Clark, City North Miami Code, compliance of the North Miami Police Department. Um, this case started on uh, January 15th, where the next inspection was done. Uh, they were sent the letter on the 16th. I uh, failed it for the hearing, and it was uh, moved to, to date. Uh, as you said, the property is homesteaded. This is the owner of the property. I have not had any words with him uh, from the last hearing. Uh, and uh, to date, the uh, violation still exists. The oversized vehicle, the truck, is um, still parked in the front driveway. Um, I'd like to submit the photos for the record, showing the defendant first. doing my job. Mr. Mr. Renard, um, you d you understand what's going on, right? You understand English? Yeah, I try. Or do you need a translator? No, I'm talking. You could talk. I'm in this one. Okay, because we do have one, a Creole-speaking translator here. It doesn't matter. We help. Okay. Huh? Okay, go ahead. All right. You want us to proceed, or you said okay with the translator? Okay, proceed. Proceed. Okay. Proceed. All right. And the, uh, that is the current photo that was taken uh, this morning. Correct. This morning. And, sir, you had the opportunity to review the photographs that the officer has presented to me? Yeah. Okay. And this is your house? Yes. And this is your truck? This is not my truck, but it's on my property. Correct. Okay. For them years, the truck was belonged to my son. Okay. He's put all them papers already made it to send him to Haiti. But by that time, he, the paper all is, by the time he bring the truck, 
he put it to his house on uh, in, North, in Miami Beach. After that, he died. It's nobody can move the truck. I move it, put him in. But his son called me, he will pick the truck up. I'm just waiting for him to come in because the last time he called me, he just waiting to have a visa to come in. Then I, I, I'm waiting for now, maybe a couple more months or two months and a half, he will be here because he told me he's on the way to. Okay, you said your son passed away? Yeah, he's okay. passed away. My condolences, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, you indicated that someone else is coming to remove the truck? To remove it. Okay, and do you know when that's going to happen? It could be by the end of this month or the, in the middle of this one too, because I spoke to him. Okay, because you understand that for the tr the truck being there in that location is a violation of the yeah, city I code. Yeah, I know that. Okay. Um, city. The city has no objection to giving him 30 days. This is a new case. What? Is that is that a is this this is a new case, correct? This is a new case, correct. It was uh, scheduled to uh, be heard in March, but we postponed it a month because of the circumstance. Okay. Yeah, I have I have no objection, unless Mr. Clark has an objection. I don't mind. Well, um, last month he said he was sick or uh, had a doctor's appointment. Um, again, my condolences also, but I'd rather go ahead and just adjudicate on it. And if he doesn't cure it by the time of the abatement date, then we proceed with it then. But just to have some insurance, so to speak, on it being moved, because take it, that truck has been there for quite some time. Um, I, I, under the circumstances, uh, I, I, um, l let's give him 30 days. And if you, sir, do you understand what's going on? I the know. last time you spoke to the code enforcement officer, he gave you 30 days, correct? He, he continued this case and give you some time to move this truck. And here we are today, it hasn't been done. Yes, it's true, but it was, it's not me who have to move it. I called him. No, it, no. Let, let's understand something. It's your responsibility. Yes. So as long you understand that it is your responsibility, I understand that somebody else is coming to move it because obviously or apparently you're not able to do it. Yes. But in the event that whomever it is that's supposed to come to move this truck, if they don't do it by the end of this month, mm -hmm. You have to come back here on the first. Okay. At which time, if I find that it's still there and it's still a violation, then I have to issue a fine against you. You understand? Yes. I and do. it's going to accumulate daily, which means that you're going to owe the city a lot of <laughs> money. Mm -hmm. So you have to do whatever you need to do to move this truck. Okay. Okay? okay it may not be yours but it's Is on your property okay. okay okay which means that the fine is going to be a Ooh, lien against uh, your property okay okay so it is your responsibility yes i do I okay do. okay all right so we're giving you an addition this an additional 30 days basically okay okay get it done okay thank you all right sir if you're ready to proceed if you're ready to proceed, we'll continue uh, with uh, agenda item 5454. Uh, Rosita Jesser? Yeah. Okay, for the property at 25 Northeast 124 Terrace, CEMHO 2013-00010. This is uh, Code Officer Wilcox's case, which was open on February 4, 2013, to repair a roof and remove a blue tarp. This is a new case. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Could you please state um, your name? My name is Yolanda, and her name is Rosita Jesser. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. 
Oh, Are you going to explain or translate for it? Yes. Um, okay. I, we we'll start with Carly Officer Wilcox, and he'll give an explanation. And do it slowly, please. Uh, <laughs> Officer Wilcox, well, sit in on want, We also have a translator who yeah. can assist, too. We don't yeah, know. It's okay. I, I, can, I can do it in English. It's fine. But if you want to bring a translator, that's okay. Yeah, let's let's bring the translator. That would be best to assist you and listen and help. Right. And then if there's something you don't agree with, you say something. All right. Okay. This is our city uh, translator. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. 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 Um, it's okay. Voy a traducir para usted lo que va a decir. Okay. All right, Code Officer Wilcox, please. Uh, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, property address located at 25 Northeast 124th Terrace. The property is occupied. Uh, there's no life or health or safety issues at the location. Um, this is a minimum house open open in violation. The property was cited uh, February 4th, 2013. Um, I sent out a notice to the property, no compliance. Um, there's a blue tarp on the roof. Um, that explains to me that um, the roof has leaks. That means that it's not weather tight or water tight. Um, I'm gonna submit the photos into the record. Second. Según el según el señor Wilcox, tu propiedad tiene un problema. Esta es tu propiedad, ¿verdad? Él está hablando del techo azul. Este es el techo azul. Ah, no, el techo azul. El techo no funciona bien. Tiene que tiene que arreglarlo. According según el Porque tiene que arreglar el techo. Por eso estamos aquí. Usted tiene que arreglar el techo. Esa es la razón por la cual estamos aquí. Arrangement. 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 Ella necesita tiempo. No, yo vengo para pedir, por favor, no to be a little bit of time. They would like to ask for more time so that they can get it fixed. All right, let, let me. We have an appointment with North Miami tomorrow to bring all the paperwork. So the city of North Speak into the microphone so we can hear you. Yeah, they have an appointment tomorrow to bring all the paperwork to the city so that they can request the permit to get it done. Yeah, so we have an there is a leak in the property from uh, from the from the roof to the kitchen. It's leaking, so they're gonna do their best to get it fixed. We have done our our best. We put some plastic to cover it so that to prevent aqua from getting down. So we're gonna do our best to to get it solved through the city. And tomorrow we have the appointment and we have all the paperwork to to start working on the roof. I don't know the procedure because it's new for us. So okay. So if you can help us with the city to do it, I'd appreciate it. We appreciate if there is a way to help them out because they don't really know the procedures are to do. Okay. Not they go on the person. He has no husband, he has nobody in the house, so he needs to help uh, to proceed to get it done. Wow. Well, city. So when was this first sighting? Fe February. 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 It's new. Mm -hmm. I have no objection to 30 days. Okay. All right. Okay, la ciudad va a darle 30 días para llegar. Sí, okay. 
la ciudad te va a dar 30 días. 30 días para alegrarlo. No puedes ir un poquito más por si acaso, porque I don't know the procedure. Can, can you give them more time? Because you know we know the procedure, what to do. Can they get more time to get it done? Please. There, yes, the code officer will help you with what you need to with what you need to do okay and the special magistrate is going to give you her decision all right we're going to give you 30 days okay we'll table it for 30 days um so that you can go through the process okay stay in contact with the code enforcement officer he will be able to answer your questions and um okay all right ma'am thank, thank, thank you we appreciate it thank you very much You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're ready to proceed, we'll go on to agenda item number 2828 for uh, Gabriel Para. Yes. Okay. Who okay? Who ha owns the property at 940 Northeast 127th Street, KCESOD 2013 0004. Uh, this is uh, Code Officer Fitzell and Miss uh, Christie's case, and um, for look at it, a new case cited on February 12, 2013, to uh, do some sodding and landscaping. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. My Good name is Gabriel Parra. Thank you. And you're the property owner? Uh, excuse me. I didn't speak English too much, so I need some later. Uh, okay. Uno momento. Oh, okay. 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 <coughs> Okay, uh, Ms. Christie, if you would tell us about the circumstance of this case. Vita Lynn Christie, Code Compliance. This is a new case in regards to the sodding of the front lawn or the front of the property. Um, case was cited back in February. Um, there has been contact made with the, uh, the gentleman at the property. They don't speak English that well, but they have been given paperwork and they have not made any changes at all. We did send uh, um, certified mail and the property was posted and as of today, there has been no changes. Um, I do have photos of the property. Mr. Translator, can you translate for, for us what the um, code enforcement officer have said? Acaba de decir que sin febrero, usted hay algo malo con el propiedad, en el frente de la propiedad, y hasta ahora usted no ha dado nada para resolverlo. ¿Qué vas a hacer para alegrarlo? Bueno, yo tenía pensado, tenía pensado de echarle concreto. Entiende al frente, pero ¿cómo hago para con permiso o ponerle hierba? Sí. 
he had he has planned to to remove it totalmente so he has to puede concreto pero tengo que sacar un permiso para para hacerle you would you would like to remove everything but he needs to get a permit for that okay he, he will be removing what is he removing Can I go over and just show him another? Yes, yes please. He is removing this and put in the driveway. Okay. Or you're concrete in the whole front. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I would like to. Me gustaría poner. Okay. ¿Qué vas a hacer? ¿Usted quiere que todo el cemento, todo el concreto aquí? ¿Qué vas a hacer? Esto. Bueno, sacar un permiso para poner concreto. He he has already request with us a permit to put the concrete, the cement. Okay. So you want to put concrete and um, you need to get a permit for that. Permit to remove it. Okay. 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 Uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to uh, provide him with a uh, pamphlet on the building permit process in our city, and it explains what we do and what's required. Vamos okay. a, a darle, uh, Is that a Spanish information? Uh, unfortunately, it's only in English. Okay. Okay. Usted, usted tiene, uh, uh, vamos a, a darle las informaciones como el proceso para hacer para sacar el permiso. En este profer usted tiene uh, usted va a ver todo eso pero está en inglés mm -hmm. no hay, no tengo ningún problema para darle a traducirlo mm -hmm. después okay. okay however your honor uh, if he goes to the building department as for Vicky Santos mm -hmm. she can explain everything to him in Spanish okay can you and explain I, and that I to put me? her name here okay cuando tiene tiene que ir a, a, a abajo para Sacar el permiso, una persona estará aquí para ayudarle a traducir todo. Sí. Okay. ok, no, te, no, no tengo ningún problema. Cuando, cuando estarás allá, un, al, alguien para, uh, pa, va a traducir para usted. Ok, yo puedo mandar a mi esposa a sacar el permiso ahí, no. O tengo que hacer yo. No, no. Can he, can he send his wife or he has to come? Sure. No. The wife is the owner of the property as well. Is, your, is, is, your, is he my wife? Is there an issue here? No, she can help. She can do it. She can go. Ella puede hacerlo. Ella puede venir contigo o sola. No, como trabajo. Sola o contigo sin problema. Ella ella puede hacerlo también. Si usted no puede. Yo trabajo de seis a cinco. Si usted no puede venir, ella puede venir para usted. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Do you understand? Um, we're g providing you with information so that you can go and um, have all your questions answered as to what you need to do to obtain the permit so that you can, um, what, what's the word? Is yes, Is a permit? Sí. Uh, Aquí tiene todas las informaciones <coughs> para lo que usted tiene que hacer para sacar el permiso. Okay. Cuando llega allá, una persona también puede ayudarle a traducirlo. Si no puedes venir, usted puede mandar a tu mujer para alegrarlo. Última pregunta. Are we tabling this for a little bit of 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 we're giving him 30 days. We're going to reset it for the Usted next hearing. Usted tiene 30 días para pensar lo que tiene que hacer. Pero el primer, lo que tiene que hacer tiene que sacar el permiso primero. Okay. 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 So whatever it is that he decides to do, um, he'll talk it over with the folks downstairs and make contact with the code enforcement officer. And um, otherwise, we'll see you next month. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let, uh, okay. okay. Déjame poner la hierba temporaria. Cuando yo tenga... Primera, primeramente usted tiene que ir, ir no. al, al no. sacar el permiso primero. Okay. Cuando usted uh, tiene el permiso, usted puede hacer, uh, ponerlo en concreto. Okay? Nada, nada. Usted, usted tiene que hacer como hierba, no. Hay que esperar el permiso primero. Okay. Okay? Okay. Usted tiene 30 días para hacerlo. Mm -hmm. ¿Comprende eso? No? Sí. He understood everything. Good. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you, sir. Gracias, señor. Okay. Okay, table 30 days. Okay. Um, the next case is uh, agenda item 36, James and Sue Ellen is East Step um, for the property at 1160 Northwest 126th Street, CERCV 2012-00079. This case was opened back in September 14th, 2012, and her last heard on March 6th when it was tabled to this evening. Good evening, Ms. Eastep. How are you? Good evening, fine. Thank you. Good, Good evening. Okay, we're going to get a report from Ms. Sanders, and then Ms. Eastep will tell us what, what she's been able to do. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code, Compliance Officer. Um, as of the day the vehicle, um, I'm sorry, the boat has been removed, um, I was going to go ahead and close this violation out. But after talking with Ms. Eastep, she brought to my attention that the boat might be coming back within a week or two. Um, so I wanted to refrain from closing it out and she can give um, her say as to what's going on with the application, if she's going to bring the boat back for sure, or just the overall <coughs> status. I know she's been working with the city to get it taken care of, but again, I didn't want to close the complaint out even though the boat has been removed because she's going to bring it back. Ma'am, good, good evening. Yes, I, I removed the boat, um, not because of this, to be quite honest, but because the boat broke down and we took it to Homestead. And since it was there and I was having trouble getting the, the uh, survey, my mortgage company doesn't have it. They, they are g going with an affidavit from the plat books of Metro Dade County. They're, you know, they're taking the affidavit. That's what they have for a survey. So no one has a survey. I have to pay for a survey. The, the cheapest I have is $350. I don't have the money right now. So I told my brother that. I said, we don't have the money, so keep the boat down in Homestead until we can afford the, the survey. I, I told Ms. Uh, Saunders that I'm not, I cannot say that the boat will not be there because, you know, we, we fish. And if my brother, you know, takes, brings the boat home on a Friday and we fish on a Saturday, the boat's going to go back to Homestead on Sunday or Monday when he goes to work. He goes to work. He works in Homestead. The boat is living in Homestead right now. But it's, it's fishing season, and I am trying to get the money for that, for that survey now that I know that I have to pay for it. Um, the boat is not there now, and I, you know, I have no intention on bringing it n this week or next week. I'm fishing in a different boat this weekend, but next weekend, my brother may say, let's go fishing. You know, I have a problem not, not bringing my boat home to go fishing because I don't have the paperwork in order for one day. You know, I mean, I'll send it back, and I, I don't. I don't believe this is going to go on for long because I know that that I have to have the survey. But it is, you know, I, I had trouble coming up with the two hundred sixty-two dollars, and now the three hundred dollars on top of that, and the, and the, you know, everything it's like oh, almost six hundred dollars on just that alone. I mean, I've moved the boat. I have no intention on the boat staying there, other than if it comes on a Friday night that my brother brings it home and we fish on Saturday that it's going to go back on Sunday or Monday morning when he goes to work. That when it will not happen very often. It will not happen more than maybe one time this month because we can't afford to fish all the time. How do you want to address this? Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, there's no, technically there's no violation since the boat is not on her property. Uh, however, if it is on the property and the code officer sees it, then, you know, she may have to recite you. So I would recommend that you, yeah. until everything is straightened out and you have the, the, uh, the variance, do not park yeah. your boat in the yeah, yard. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, the boat is not there, and it's not there for the reason that we do not have the permit. And, you know, I have been... Okay, full. well, just not... You know, you know, I mean, I, if, if I do bring it, I may ask my neighbor across the street that he has a big backyard. Let me swing it in there for the night. <laughs> I will. That's it will not solution. be there. Okay. It will not be there overnight. It will not be there. All right. All right. Thank you. It may be parked there for a minute, but then it's going to go across the street in my neighbor's yard. Just to wash it down with my water okay. at my house and then across the street or to Homestead. It may be parked there for a minute. Okay. But no longer than... 12 hours. 
Okay. All right. So we're keeping it open yeah. and we're not keeping it open? Okay. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, at this point, the, there's, the no, there's no violation. If I, re you know, if she sees it and, uh, and you if know. If she sees it, she can also she can issue a ticket. Yeah, right. yeah, no she doubt. She doesn't even have to open up a case. Right. So I would recommend, yes, rather than getting a ticket, which is how much? Two, 250? <laughs> how much is <laughs> a ticket? 100. 100. $100? Okay, well, $100. Uh, it'll be it'll start with a hundred. A hundred dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah you may want to. Uh, Your Honor, since the testimony is that uh, both from the code officer and and Miss Eastep that the the boat is no longer there, the city has no problem t for dismissing this case. Okay, so it's dismissed. Uh, and I just go on with the regular paperwork trying to obtain this permit. Correct. Thank, Thank you very much. Department. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Miss Anders. <coughs> All right, uh, Your Honor, seeing it, it is uh, two minutes to seven. And there, are, sir, do you have a case with us? The same? No. Uh, there are no other property owners, attorneys, or other interested parties present. We do have a number of cases uh, that we would like to present in order. If the officers want to come forward, we would ask them to do so at this time. And. Um, We'll uh, start with the agenda item number two. Oh, and uh, we want to thank our translator for coming tonight, and we'll discharge him at this time. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll start with agenda item number two. Ada, Charles, and uh, Lucas and Vincent <coughs> to the property at 941 Northeast 139th Street, KCEPFY 2013-00026. This case was opened on um, February 11, 2013. It was adjudicated March 6th with the abatement date of April 2nd and a fine amount set uh, at $25 a day for failure to comply. Uh, Ms. Christie will present the case. Vita Lynn Christie, code compliance. Um, certified mail was sent to the property. Um, notice to appear was also posted at the property on 320. Photos of the violation remain as of today, and I do have photo, a photo for the record, and there has been no changes. Looking at a photograph that was taken on 4-2-2013, and the vehicle is still parked on the lawn. I find that the, um, there's proper notice. I find that the violation still exists based on the um, testimony of the city code enforcement officer. And the $25 fine is hereby ratified. Thank you. Next is agenda item number nine for Anna Lopez for the property at 1155 Northeast 133rd Street, KCEMHO 2013-00001. This case was opened in January 7, 2013. It was heard in March 6th and table two today. Code Officer Clark will present the case. Morning, Clark City, North Miami Code Compliance of the City of North Miami Police Department. Um, <coughs> this case is a reference to the uh, roof conditions of the property. Uh, which is in disrepair. Um, to date, uh, nothing has been done uh, in reference to uh, correcting the uh, violation. Uh, but I do want to add, uh, if you remember, the uh, tenant came and uh, represented the property, and there were several cases. Um, and uh, That's correct. She said that the uh, landlord was an absentee landlord and correct. she couldn't contact. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, she asked me to ask you to give her more time because she, even though the onus is on the property owner itself, you seen that she did have some interest in correcting these violations on her own. And uh, unfortunately, she asked me to ask you if you can give her more time. And the reason being that she's not here today, unfortunately, is that uh, her husband had a heart attack Monday. Mm -hmm. And I was just over there talking to him Sunday. So I just wanted to put it on record also because, again, uh, she is trying to uh, do a good deed uh, for the owner. But uh, being that she's not the owner, I want you to go ahead and 
just uh, we're going to uh, adjudicate on this case, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, however you want to do it, if you want to give them more time or adjudicate uh, the case. But in any event, it's still going to end up being the owner's responsibility. And uh, I would like for you to adjudicate because, you know, as we saw before, it was it's several different violations on the property. And uh, I personally don't think it's um, healthy for not well not personally but I don't think it's healthy for anyone to be living in those conditions mm -hmm. they did uh, do some things but we'll get into that with the next few cases that's coming up but um, again she couldn't be here tonight okay. but she did also show uh, send me fax me proof uh, of um, what she could which was like a visitor's pass of being in the hospital every day and whatnot minus the personal um, information of uh, documents uh, husband being admitted so your choice okay. I, I mean I do remember this case and I, I know that Miss Roll is usually present here mm -hmm. um, representing the um, the homeowner who's an absentee landlord um, and also, but excuse me, I would like to submit the updated photo for the record. <laughs> Pardon me. And I know she's trying her best only because she lives there. But unfortunately, the um, responsibility rests with the homeowners. Correct. Um, and um, therefore, I find that... Um, the violation does exist. I find in favor of the city. And um, can we give him an abatement date of, can we push it two months to give her some mm -hmm. time considering mm -hmm. the condition, you know, with her husband sure. who's ill and. Sure, we can push uh, the abatement date to June 4th and gives additional time. Okay, so we'll give her an abatement date of June 4th and a daily fine amount of $25 per day. Okay. Next case is agenda item number 10. Uh, again, Anna Lopez, 1155 Northeast 133rd Street, CENUS 2013-00003. This is the B. Okay, uh, but it wasn't closed out, so. Oh, okay. All right, and the city, uh, this violation has been uh, addressed by the city, so we're going to respectfully ask for this case to be dismissed. Dismissed. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 12, Anna Lopez, 1155 Northeast 133rd uh, Street, CESOD 2013-00002. Mr. Clark. Wayne Clark City, North Miami Code, Compliance with City of North Miami Police Department. Uh, this is also a case uh, dealing with the same property in reference to the front yard uh, ground conditions. Uh, there is no landscaping in the front, no sod, um, just actually dirt. Uh, I'd like to submit the photo for the record. Uh, to date, um, pictures show that uh, it's in the same condition. Reviewing photographs that were taken on this date for 3 2013. And it is the officer's testimony that it is in the same condition as it was when this property was first sighted. Again, same situation where we usually have Mrs. Roll come in um, and Again, it's the owner's responsibility to fix the violation, and therefore I find the violation ex still exists. I find there's proper notice, um, adjudicate guilty um, with an abatement date of 60 days to run with the other file and a $25 um, fine per day, daily fine.
Okay, and the last case, this is this uh, agenda item 13, same property and owner, and uh, Lopez at 1155 Northeast 133rd, case CESWR uh, 2013 Mr. Clark. Wayne Clark, City of North Miami Code Compliance, City of North Miami Police Department. Uh, this is case in reference to the sidewalk uh, and disrepair. Um, as it was told before, the sidewalk was broken by her son's uh, big truck and uh, equipment um, hooked to the truck um, actually broke the uh, sidewalk. And uh, to date, the sidewalks are in the same condition. And I'd like to submit the photos taken to date for the record. And I do want to mention uh, that I didn't in prior cases that this house, this home is not homesteaded. Reviewing photograph that was when was this photograph taken today? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is it, okay. it came off Okay, reviewing photograph of the sidewalk um, Dated for 3 2013 Okay um, I find based on the unrebutted evidence and testimony of the code enforcement officer, I find that the violation exists. I find there's proper notice. Um, I find, um, actually, what did I do? Yeah, this case okay, was opened we'll in January 7th. January 7th? Uh, and the city would recommend uh, the same uh, uh, abatement dates and hearing dates. Same abatement to date. run with the others. Correct, and twenty-five dollars daily fine amount. Thank you. Next is case is agenda item fourteen one four Antonio Rondo, for the property at four four five Northwest one hundred twenty seventh Street. Case CEODS 2013-00018. Code Officer Wilcox. And huh. this, this is a new case. Yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Property address is 445 Northwest 127th Street. Um, I observed this violation on uh, February 26, 2013 for outdoor storage of bed mattress underneath the carport. Submit the photos to record. And I don't have no return receipt from, from the owner and the property was posted with a notice to appear. May 21, 2013. You said May? May. March. Yeah, <laughs> we know what you meant. March. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Reviewing photographs that were taken on this date um, for 3 2013. Is it occupied? Yes. yes. Okay. And you said it was posted, but. The certified mail, you said you didn't get the receipt, but it was posted. Yes, yes, the okay. was posted, but I'm not, I have not received the certified mail. Okay. All right. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the officer and the evidence presented, I find that the violation does exist. I find in favor of the city and pose a daily fine of $25 per day with an abatement date of June 4th, 2013. And I find good notice. Okay, the next case agenda item 15, Aurora Loan Services LLC for the property at 14000 Northeast 16th Court. KCEMHS 2012 0018. This case was opened 
on December uh, 10th, 2012. It was adjudicated March 6th, 2013 with a bait and bait of April 2nd, 2013. And this was uh, to apply for a permit and repair a damaged roof. Good officer Clark. Wayne Clark, City of North Miami Code Compliance of the North Miami Police Department. Um, the property is still in the same, uh, the roof is in the same condition. And I'd like to submit the photos taken today for the record. I'm reviewing a photograph that was taken on this date, 4-3-2013. Okay. And you have had no contact with the homeowners, is that correct? It's uh, owned by, I guess, the bank, but uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Um, based on the uncontroverted um, testimony of the um, code enforcement officer, I find that the violation still exists and hereby ratify the $25 daily fine. Agenda item 16, uh, Betty Walker at uh, 2140 Hibiscus Circle, KCESHD. 2013-00001, a new case opened by Officer Kearson on February 26, 2013, related to a shed encroaching in the side setback. Mr. Kearson. Code Officer Ivy Kearson of the City of North Miami Police Department. Um, property address is 2140 Hibiscus Circle. Property owner is Betty Walker. This is a homesteaded property. Um, this is not a life safety issue. Um, <clears throat> and the property is uh, occupied. Uh, first uh, noticed, observed the violation back on uh, February 23rd. I sent out a violation letter on the 20, uh, 26th of February to uh, Mrs. Walker. Um, I've had numerous conversations with Mrs. Walker in reference to this violation. Um, I informed her uh, several times exactly what she needed to do. Um, still no compliance. I'd like to um, submit the uh, pictures for the record. And the property was posted on March 21st, 2013 at 11.40 a.m. The pictures were taken on April 2nd, not February 4th. Okay. <laughs> I'm reviewing photographs dated 2-4-2013, but based on the officer's, officer's testimony, it was actually taken on yesterday. On, on yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't make contact with the property owners? I have. I've spoken to her a number of times. She's aware of the violation. Okay. She knows that the um, she knows that the shed needs to be moved. Um, I informed her that it's encroaching into the setback. It needs to be moved seven and a half feet from the um, property line. Um, I've talked to her, building officials talked to her. She has a number of other issues on uh, with this property, so she's well aware of this. And she's aware of this. She's aware of the. She's aware of the uh, meeting tonight, but for whatever reason, she chose not to uh, appear. Okay. All right. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the officer and the evidence presented. I find in favor of the city, I find a violation does exist. I find that proper notice was given to the property owner and they have failed to appear for this hearing. Um, I will um, impose a daily fine of $25 per day with an abatement date of June 4th, 2013.
The next case is agenda item 17 for Carmel Conze uh, for the property at 920 Northwest 123rd Street, case CEOSV 2013-00002. This is a new case opened on January 8, 2013 for two white box trucks parked in the front and on the side of the property. Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Enforcement Officer. As already stated, the property address is 920 Northwest 123rd Street for two oversized vehicles that were parked on the property. Um, there are no life safety issues that, I, um, that I'm aware of. I am showing that it is a homesteaded property that is occupied. Um, I have not had any contact with anyone from this property, but I did leave a couple of courtesy letters back in January asking that the trucks be removed. Um, I am showing that um, I sent a couple of letters both in January and in February. I understand that they called and had a conversation with Pilar asking for um, an extension. I do show that I granted them an extension um, on January 31st asking for a month. As of today, the vehicle, or actually the truck still remain and I've had no contact myself with the property owners. I do have um, pictures of the vehicles in or trucks to show if you would like to see. Yes, please. Um, the officer has presented photographs that were taken on 4-3-2013 showing the truck parked on the front lawn. I find based on the unrebutted testimony of the police, of the code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find in favor of the city. I find there was proper notice. The homeowners have failed to appear. I will issue a, um, impose a daily fine amount of $25 with the abatement date of June 4th, 2013. I'm sorry, you said June? I'm sorry, where are we? April 30th. Have I been saying June, mm -hmm. Alan? Yes, you have. <laughs> Are you really? I thought you were being very generous this evening. Uh, no, I, I didn't mean to be. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, if you want to change them, you'd have to go back. No, we'll keep them. All right. But that's, I, oh, okay. All right, agenda item 22, uh, Ernest M. Uh, Jimenez, followed by agenda item 23, same property owner. For uh, 2325 Arch Creek Drive, first case is CMHO, 2013-00005. Uh, this is a new case opened by Code Officer Kirsten, January 17, 2013, for, um, to replace some missing roof tiles at the rear of the building. Code Officer Kirsten. Called Officer Ivy Kirsten of the City of North Miami Police Department. Uh, property address is 2325 Arch Creek Drive. Property owner is Ernest M. Jimenez. Um, uh, this property is, um, well, I, I believe it is it is occupied because I've spoken to the um, uh, the, the um, property owner once and. Um, and the homes and homestead status it is homesteaded I believe. yes and there are no life safety issues on this property um, like I said I did speak to the property owner once and he asked for more time um, I haven't spoken to him since I initially cited this property back on um, Back on uh, January of uh, January 14th, when is when I first observed this violation, um, like I said, uh, he asked for uh, some uh, some time to comply. 
he still hasn't the roof tiles are still missing um it's not here today the property was posted the notice to appear on march 21st 2013 at 12:06 p.m and i'd like to submit the pictures for the record Once again, please disregard the date that's on the picture. It's reversed. That's an issue I need to fix with my camera. It's actually was taken on the 2nd of April. All right. I'm reviewing a photograph that was taken on yesterday, but it's dated 2 4 2013. Erroneously. Right. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be flipped. Okay. All right. Based on the unrebutted testimony and evidence presented by the code enforcement officer, I find in favor of the city. I find there was proper notice. Um, the homeowners have failed to appear. Um, I hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 per day with the abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Next case is agenda item 23, a companion case, same property and owner, case CEMIS 2013-00001. A new case opened on by Code Officer Kearson January 17th to remove the storm shutters. Code Officer Kearson. Ivy Kearson, City of North Miami Police Department. Um, the property address is 2325 Arch Creek Drive. Property owner is Ernest M. Jimenez. Um, property uh, is occupied home it is homesteaded and there are no life safety issues on the property uh, once again this property was cited back on the 17th of uh, well it was first noted on the um, I'm sorry yes on the uh, 14th of uh, January violation letter was sent out to the property owner um, Property owner still has not complied with removing the storm shutters. I'd like to submit the pictures for the record. Reviewing a copy of a photograph that was taken by the code enforcement officer um, on yesterday, erroneously dated 2 4 2013. Thank you. You did say it was homesteaded, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the police, of the code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find in favor of the city, I find there was proper notice. Um, the homeowner has failed to appear. Um, I hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with the abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Next case is agenda item number 26 to 6. Uh, Freddie Boza and Lydia Martinez for the property 470 Northwest 133rd Street, CEBNP, 2012-00101. This is case opened by Code Officer Wilcox on October uh, 23, 2012. The case was adjudicated on March 6, 2013 with the abatement date of April 2nd, 2013, to find amounts already been established. Code Officer Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Code Compliance. The property located at 4470 Northwest 133rd Street. The property was posted with notice to appear uh, March 20th, 2013, at 10 o'clock a.m. As of today, there's no permits on file for the work. Um, I couldn't gain access to the property to take any photos of of the violations, but I do have the previous photos. I am reviewing photographs that were taken back in March 
March 6, 2013. And based on the unrebutted testimony of the officer, having reviewed the um, city records and no permit has been pulled, I find that the violation still exists. I find there was proper notice. Homeowners have once again failed to appear. And I hereby ratify the daily amount um, that was imposed, the $25 da daily amount. Thank you. Next case agenda, item number 31. Uh, Idalberto Rodriguez, 410 Northwest 128th Street, KCEFAW 2013-00016. This is a new case opened by Code Officer Wilcox on February 19, 2013, uh, to repair the rear wood fence at the property. Code Officer Wilcox. Uh, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Code Compliance. Uh, the property uh, property address 14 Northwest 128th Street. Um, on February 19, 2013, um, I, I, um, I received a complaint for squatters at the location. Uh, I went out to the property. I observed the events, violation, and other violations at the property. The property is vacant. The property is not occupied. And the property the property is non homesteaded. Submit the photos to record. Reviewing photographs that were taken on this date for 3 2013. You indicated the property was posted, correct? Yes, the property was posted with notice to appear March 20th, 2013 at 9.45 a.m. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find in favor of the city, I find notice was, was proper. I find... Um, the homeowners has failed to appear and um, I am hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with the abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Next case agenda item 32, same property and owner, case CEJNK 2013-00027. Cases, a new case opened by Code Officer Wilcox on February 19, 2013, to remove uh, a tire, wood, door, and other junk re related items from the rear of the property. Code Officer Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Code Compliance property address located at 410 Northwest 128th Street. The property was posted with notice to appear on March 20, 2013, at 9.45 a.m. Um, uh, I did receive a complaint in reference to a squatters at the property, and I noticed the junk in the rear of the property. I'm um, going to submit the photos into record. Reviewing photographs that were taken by the code enforcement officer, um, dated for 3-2013. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find in favor of the city. I find there's proper notice. The homeowners have failed to appear. I hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with the abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Agenda item 33, another companion case, same property and owner. Uh, CEMHO 2013-00013, opened by Code Officer Wilcox on February 19, 2013, for, to board up all openings around the entire property, uh, B 
building permit would be needed uh, if necessary. Cut Officer Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Code Compliance. Uh, the, this is a MHO, MHO violation, minimum house openings. Um, the property was initially cited February 19, 2013. I received, a, I received a complaint. Went out to the location, observed the real windows missing, two ACs missing, that left two openings. Um, I posted the property with a notice to appear at 9.45 a.m. on March 20, 2013. Submit the photos to record. This property is vacant. Reviewing photographs that were taken by the code enforcement officer dated 4-3-2013. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer, I find in favor of the city. I find there's proper notice. <clears throat> I hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with an abatement date of April 30, 2013. Thank you. The next case is agenda item 39. Uh, Jenny Lee Navarro for the property at 530 Northwest 130th Street, KCENUS 2012-00048. New case, it was opened on November 13, 2012. And this is to, uh, uh, that the pool cover is unsafe and to recover the pool. Code Officer Wilcox. Yes, it's Officer Will Considered in North Memory Code Compliance. The property was uh, inspected uh, November 13, 2012 for a nuisance violations to recover the roof, I mean to recover the pool. Um, the property is not occupied, it's vacant. The property was posted with notice to appear March 21st, 2013. And I need you to submit an order to have the pool recovered because the pool pool was covered by the city, but the pool is so damaged now that it needs to be recovered for safety reasons. I submit the photos into record. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Reviewing photographs that were taken by the code enforcement officer. Um, based on the unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer and the um, evidence presented, I find um, in favor of the city. I find um, there's proper notice. The homeowner has failed to appear. I also find that there is definitely a safety issue. Um, and hereby impose a daily fine amount of $50 per day and um, we'll issue an order for the city to cover the, um, the pool. Thank you. Next case will be Officer Kirsten's case agenda, item number 40, uh, for Joan Winokur and Kenneth Heller for the property at uh, 2105 Exora Road, KCEMIS 2012-00030. Case was open in November 2nd, 2012. It was adjudicated January 2nd, 2013, and the abatement date of February 5th, 2013. Case was heard February 6th and tabled to today's hearing date. A fine amount has already been established. Code Officer Kirsten. Code Officer Ivy Kirsten, City of the North Miami Co um, Police Department. Um, simply stating there's been no compliance. The, um, the property owners just retopped the roof, and I'd like to submit the pictures for the record. Reviewing photographs that we're taking on this date. Was it this day? Because it's all backwards. Yeah, the <laughs> 4 they, 3 2013. Yeah. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the um, code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find the violation still exists. 
I find um, good notice. The homeowners have failed to appear. Um, the daily fine amount of $50 is hereby ratified. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's finish up with Ivy. Okay, uh, agenda item 51, MP uh, Leiden Hall, Inc. At 12395 Keystone Island Drive, CEMHA 2013-00003. This is a new case open on March 7th uh, to uh, repair the collapsed ceiling in the carport. Code Officer Kirsten. Code Officer Ivy Kirsten, City of North Miami Code Compliance Unit. Um, property address um, is... 12395 Keystone Island Drive, and the owners are MP Leading Hall, Inc. Um, this is a vacant property. Um, it is not homesteaded. Um, although the um, the uh, the the, uh, on the, the, the um, ceiling portion of the uh, of the carport is collapsing. Um, it really doesn't serve as a life safety issue because it's once you see the pictures you'll see to it it's just more of a, a cosmetic issue um, have not had any contact from the owners um, sent out a, a violation letter back on the uh, on March March the 8th the property was posted and a notice to appear on March 20th, 2013 at 11.35 a.m. I'd like to submit the pictures for the record. Thank you. Thank you. And you said there is no life safety issue? No, it's, it's not structural. It's okay. mainly just uh, like a little thin layer of plaster. All right. Um, based on the evidence presented by the code enforcement officer and his unrebutted um, testimony, I find in favor of the city. I find good notice. The homeowner has failed to appear. I hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with an abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Thank you. Uh, the next is it will go back to agenda item 50, which is a companion case, same property and owner, case CEAPR 2013-00001 against MP Leiden Hall, Inc. Um, this is a case was uh, opened by me on uh, February 7, 2013 uh, for a violation of city code that uh, relating to registration of vacant properties. This property is in need of repair. Um, it's a violation of section 5-70 of city code. Um, the pr uh, ownership of the property was determined by a review of the Dade County property records. Um, this is cases related to um, strictly to the registration of vacant abandoned properties in the city have had no contact with uh, MP Leiden Hall Inc. The property was posted for the notice to appear for tonight's hearing on uh, March 20th, 2013 by Code Officer Kearson. City is requesting uh, a short abatement date of April 30th and a May 1st hearing. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the of Officer Graham, I find in favor of the city. Um, I find the um, violation exists. Property is not registered with the city. I find good notice and um, impose a daily fine amount of twenty five dollars with an abatement date of April thirtieth, twenty thirteen. Thank you. And I believe the. Let's see, we have a uh, couple more cases and we're almost done. Mm -hmm. um, agenda item 57 for Secretary of HUD for the property at 240 Northwest 135th Street, K 
KCE EXP 2012-00200, a case opened by Code Officer Wilcox on October 19, 2012. Uh, this is related to uh, pressure clean and paint the roof. Code Officer Wilcox. Yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, the property was uh, uh, the violation I observed October 19, 2012. Uh, the property was posted with notice to appear um, March 20, 2013 at 10.45 a.m. Um, this is a dirty roof violation here, EXP. Um, the property is vacant. I do have a return to sender letter from the owners here in the file. I'm going to submit the file into record. Reviewing photograph that was taken by the code enforcement officer on this date for 3 2013. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the officer and the evidence presented, I find in favor of the city. I find the, the, the violation it does exist. I find good notice. Hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 with an abatement date of April 30th, 2013. And the last case is companion case agenda item 59, Secretary of HUD for the same property, 240 Northwest. 135th Street, KCEMHO, 2012-00062, opened by Code Officer Wilcox, October 19, 2012, to remove the tarp from the roof and repair the roof as needed. Code Officer Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliant, property address 240 Northwest 135th Street. Um, this is a minimum house opening violation, um, roof, uh, top on roof, um, shows signs of leaks. Uh, posted property with notice to appear in March 20, 2013 at 10.45 a.m. Return, no return receipt here, certified. We submit the photos into record. Thank you. Reviewing photographs that were taken on 4-3-2013 by the code enforcement officer. Based on the officer's unrebutted testimony and evidence presented, I find in favor of the city. I find a violation exists. I find good notice. Homeowner has failed to appear. Um, hereby impose a daily fine amount of $25 per day within abatement date of April 30th, 2013. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Your Honor, that completes the agenda, and with your consent, we will adjourn at 7.45 p.m. Hearing adjourn. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Thank you.